Lord, you are good and you are faithful. You are strong and you are kind. And you invite us to seek you first because you sought us first in sending your son Jesus that we might know the way, the truth and the life that we might see that he died in our place to forgive all our sins and to lead us into true life. Oh, we thank you, Jesus, that you sought us first. While we were still a long way off, you sought us and we are found by you. Thank you, Jesus. And because... You are our risen, ascended Lord, alive and reigning today. We can know you by the presence of your Holy Spirit visiting us once again. And so we say, come Holy Spirit, fill our hearts and our minds with the knowledge and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Do take a seat. I'd love us to stay in that attitude of prayer. For centuries, men and women have prayed the Bible, have sought God in the words of Scripture. I want to reflect on God's sevenfold rescue but I'd love us to do it in an attitude of prayer and receiving from him. You might want to be in that posture of prayer if it helps you to have your eyes closed, maybe your hands out to receive, but as you feel comfortable to receive these words as I lead us in this prayer over scripture. Let's pause to be still. To know that the Lord is here and his spirit is is with us. As we come to you, Lord Jesus, you are the God of rescue and restoration. We thank you for your great and beautiful mission in the world. And we say to you, here I am. Here I am, Lord, Fill me with your spirit and send me. We choose to rejoice in your rescue of us today. We remember these ancient words of praise in Psalm 72. He will rescue the poor when they cry to him. He will help the oppressed, the oppressed who have no one to defend them. He feels pity for the weak and the needy, and he will rescue them. He will redeem them from oppression and violence, for their lives are precious to him. Lord, we see the way your mission has been expanding from day to day, from month to month, and year to year, like ripples in a pond. From one man to his immediate descendants, and then onto a people who are becoming a nation. That ancient people, Israel. But the Lord did not stop there. He had chosen that group that they might be the voice piece on earth for him. Your word goes out in all the earth. You sent your son Jesus as the one to rescue. God of rescue and restoration. We thank you for your great and beautiful mission in the world. Here we are. Fill us, Lord, 
and send us. You said to your people in Exodus, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will deliver you from slavery and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people and I will be your God and you shall know that I am the Lord your God who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. And Lord, you are bringing us out of our slavery, out from under oppression, out from the wilderness where we did not know you. And you want to bring us into a land of promise. A land that we are to take possession of. And as we cast our minds back to the story of Israel. As we consider our own identity. Their identity was based on God's sevenfold act of liberation. God said to them, and he says similar to us, I will bring you out. I will deliver you. I will redeem you. I will take you as my people. I will be your God. I will bring you into the land, and I will give it to you. So let this be our prayer. Lord, help me with all of my heart to trust your work in my life. Is there any area of my life where I am relying on my own understanding? Thinking that I must work everything out for myself. And Jesus says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. And continuing on in prayer. Lord, I pray for someone I know whose life is constrained by a controlling burden perhaps a chronic illness, an eating disorder, an addiction, or coercive control of a toxic relationship. Lord, would you set them free? Bring them into a new place of wholeness. Lord, be Lord in their life. And as we return to that passage in Exodus, listen out for a particular word or phrase that Holy Spirit is wanting to highlight to you. Say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians, and I will deliver you from slavery to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people and I will be your God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God who has brought you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will bring you into the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac 
and to Jacob. I will give it to you for a possession. I am the Lord. I wonder what word or phrase jumped out from those verses to you. God offers no lengthy explanation as to why he's about to do what he will do for Israel. But we notice one brief phrase repeated three times. I am the Lord. And that is all the explanation that they need. Is it all the explanation that I need? Our God, the unfathomable mystery who eternally sustains everything that exists, is his own explanation. And his purpose and meaning is love. Just hold that thought. His purpose and meaning is love. Lord, we yield ourselves to the mystery of your loving purpose. Confident in the promise that we will know that you are the Lord, our God. That in our own quiet time and our own times of reaching out to you, we will know that you are the Lord, our God. The Lord says to you in Jeremiah, I will put my law within you. I will write it on your heart. I will be your God and you shall be my people. And no longer will you say, know the Lord, for you shall all know me. What is the Lord wanting you to know about him for your life today? Ask him. Holy Spirit, come. More of you in each one of us. Help us to give ourselves away to others. Being kind to everyone we meet. So Holy Spirit, help us to love the lost. Proclaiming Jesus Christ, who is Lord, in all we say and do. Amen.
God's love never runs out. Never gives up. You might want to stay in that attitude of prayer, receiving that love of the Lord Jesus for you. That love that never runs dry, never runs out. Or you may want to sing it as you receive it, to sing it over those that you are praying for. Those whom you will meet this week, today, wherever you will meet them. Amen.